What is up? My name is Matt Working for Cinematography Database, and in this video, we're going to be using Set Designer and Cinema 4D to design a really simple bedroom. Let's get right into Cinema 4D. So here we are in Cinema 4D, and this is the final room that we're going to be designing today. If I pull back out to this view and I get rid of one of our walls, we'll see that it's a simple four wall set with a floor and a ceiling. We have a door, we have two windows, and some really, really basic furniture. Um, didn't go to town on dressing this just yet, but this would work really great for doing some previs of a room or just doing architectural visualization, whatever you need. So let's start a new scene right now. So to start, we are going to go to Set Designer, and uh, I've got a couple folders here, and Set Designer is where I keep all of my parametric objects. And we're going to start, like I always do, with a wall. And so we're going to get rid of everything on this and just use it as a normal wall. Pretty straightforward, but it does come with some floor molding and um, some other abilities that we'll look at in a second. So next, to make this an actual bedroom, I'm going to go to my furniture folder here, and I'm going to bring in a queen bed that is modeled after the IKEA Malm bed, which was my first bed out of college, and I think I've bought this bed um, once used on Craigslist and then at least once new from actual IKEA when I used to live in New York City. It's kind of a New York City staple, and I've also used it on set for commercials quite a bit, so that's why I decided to build this bed first, and we're going to be adding many, many, many more beds in the future. So next is going to be our two-drawer dresser, again from the same line of IKEA furniture, uh, and I have owned this little guy multiple times. Definitely, one, again, once used from Craigslist and then once in New York City. And then I think I actually had it in my first house when I moved from New York City. So this little guy has got a special place in my heart. <laughs> and I'm excited to have that be available for everyone else. Now, uh, what I did recently is I've updated everything in Set Designer to the new PBR material in Cinema 4D. And if you look at this, it's like everything is kind of blown out. And that's because of the reflection from the HDRI that we're using that's default. So if we turn off reflections, then we kind of look at it, we kind of see it in its old school state. And I much prefer this. So I'm turning off reflections for this for now. But we have a bed. It comes with uh, a really basic looking uh, pillow and, and comforter. That's as much effort as I was able to put into it for this first build. And what's somewhat new here with this one is that you can change all the materials out here. So if you made a new material, you could drag it in there. And I could also give this a little bit of a color here with the pre-built material that it comes with. Um, and that's actually not working. Okay, sorry for the pause. Like I said, I just updated everything to the PBR materials and updated the controls, but this bed apparently didn't get fully updated, so I just fixed it myself, and I'll be re-uploading it to the database shortly. But now that everything is working, I'm able to change the colors of uh, each of these things, uh, the comforter, the mattress, and the pillows, all from this little control window here, and then I can also just overwrite the materials completely if I wanted to. So I'm gonna make them, I'm gonna move them back to white, but I'm gonna make the blanket, as I was thinking, something like a uh, toothpaste color. So there's, a, there's the beginning to our bedroom. Pretty nice so far. And next, I'm gonna go back to Set Designer, and I'm gonna get a wall. So here is our second wall. I'm going to rotate it in like this. There are interiors and um, different sizes are different sides to these walls here, which you'll kind of get used to in time. And so I'm making sure that this is facing that way. So I'm actually gonna start renaming these. I'm gonna call this wall bed, and I'm gonna call this wall with windows. And that's going to come in handy later when we need to change the materials of them. And I'm gonna make this wall just a little bit bigger. Again, this width is in, um, in centimeters. So I'll just round it off and say 550 centimeters. I don't know how many. I don't know how many feet that is, but I, I am starting to work in centimeters a lot more. It's just um, more friendly for 3D, and it's more friendly for basically everywhere in the world besides the US. And I'm going to get rid of the door, and I'm going to grab our two windows, which are in here, and hopefully they don't, don't bug out too bad. I'm going to change them to 60 by 120, so they're a little bit bigger. And this one got a little bit funny here, but that's okay. Usually if you move it around, the bool starts cooperating. And so something like that, that looks like a pretty nice little window situation. And what I'm going to do for the opposite wall is because this is just going to be a normal uh, square or rectangle room, I know that this wall is going to be the same exact size as the other one. And because of that, I'm going to just make an instance of it. And I think that's lighter on the computer. I think that's uh, easier for the memory, perhaps, to use instances. I'm not positive about that. But what I like about it, um, which we'll see in a second, is that it's really easy to activate and deactivate instances compared to um, actual copies. 
So I'm gonna put this here. And yeah, there is our opposite wall. I'm just gonna call it, uh, I'm gonna call it wall um, bed opposite, which is not the best name. You could definitely do a better job naming these if you wanted to. So next let's grab another wall. And I do recommend just bringing in new walls every time. It's gonna allow you to do um, a better job keeping track of the materials later. And uh, I'm gonna put this one here. And I can't make an instance because it's gonna be different than the opposite wall, but it will, however, be the same, um, the same length. So I'm gonna grab these. Those are all my walls. And the wall that has the windows is 550, and the new wall is going to be also 550. And let it update itself, there we go, pretty good. So I'm gonna call this one wall with a door. So we have wall bed, wall door, wall windows, and the opposite of the bed. So that's how we're naming it today. Uh, with the door, how is this lining up so far? It looks pretty good. Scooting things around just a little bit. So we're not like being like construction precise here. Like, I don't know if I would go into building a set from these dimensions, but if that is a concern for people moving forward, I will eventually make this a little bit more accurate to the real world and have the dimensions be like perfect corners and whatnot. But this is pretty good for previous. So the only thing I'm gonna change here is I'm gonna go to my door, spin around and look at it. And doors are surprisingly hard to 3D model parametrically. You'd be surprised how much goes into making just a basic door like this. But uh, anyway, set designer, you don't have to do that. And I'm gonna go make a whole bunch of more doors as well, like double doors and closets and stuff like that. But this is our basic door here with a nice little reflective uh, hinge and doorknobs. The reflections look funny because the reflections are off, but looks pretty good there. And I just make sure that the door doesn't like clip into the wall when it's open to keep it kind of realistic. So something like this. So here is our basic layout. So far we have four walls, two windows, and a door. And something clearly missing now is going to be our floor, which is uh, pretty straightforward. I just use a plane. I haven't made like special objects for floors yet. I don't know if I'm going to. Uh, that's pretty good. I'm gonna give it like a little bit of a hallway. Not that we're gonna see it in this render, but just in case. So there is our floor. And I'm gonna call it as such the floor. And then I'm also going to hold control make a copy of it and leave it like that. And this will be our ceiling. So again, not a construction grade ceiling uh, and not even one for a set. It's only for visualization, what it looks like in there. So it's not a very like physics, it's not like a very accurate real world set, but that's okay. So I'm gonna make one that's a group that's called room and I'm gonna put the walls and the ceiling and the floor in that one. And then I'm gonna make another null which I, or group, however you wanna think about it. And I'm gonna call this furniture. We're gonna put that in there. Staying organized helps a whole lot and keeps you from being discouraged and making changes later on. So to start, let's make a new material for the ceiling. So new PBR material, and I'm just gonna call it ceiling and we're gonna use that um, basically how it is, except I'm gonna to go to the reflection and turn off specular strength because specular in reflections is kind of a no-no. So we're gonna put that on the ceiling and then I'm gonna hide the ceiling for now so I can actually see it. And I'm also going to hide this wall by disabling it so now I can actually see inside of my set. And now let's add a floor to this. So I'm gonna to go to the set designer materials here and I have a couple wood floors. They look really crazy in the viewports, but I promise they're not that crazy looking when you render them. Uh, I brought in wood floor number two. Hope to be making many more of these in substance designer and based on scans in the future. And I'm gonna change you to cubic. And we have a nice little floor going on there. Pretty nice and that will render very shiny and realistic as well once we start to light this, which we will do at the end. And let's just dress this a little bit more, just like we did in the demo scene. So let's go to our furniture here. We're just gonna dress this really quick. So I'm gonna bring in this dresser. I'm gonna bring in a chair and I'm gonna bring in a desk. So that's what's gonna get us started here. So the dresser, let's go to the top view here. I'm gonna spin this here and I think, yeah, so it's backwards. The dresser doesn't have a back, which I realized um, when I was making this, I should probably add backs to these in case you're shooting over them or something like that, but they don't have backs right now. So they're just kind of hollow and they don't have actual drawers to save on geometry. I don't think the majority of people actually need to have the drawers open and close. Um, but if you are a set designer user, let me know in the forum or on the Facebook group or whatnot, if opening and closing drawers is something you want. Cause I could do that. It would just make the models, you know, a little heavier and a little bit bigger um, 
slow down the viewport just a tiny bit. So there's our desk and our chair. I you try to give this like a little bit of attitude, like a little bit of a little bit of randomness to it. Though this is a very perfect looking room so far. And I think that's about it. I don't, I don't know if I was going to add anything else to it. Um, I had a picture frame in the other one, but I'm just going to not use the picture frame for time here. So we have a nice little room. Um, our bed, I'm looking in the top view, we have our bed, the little side dressers, a desk and a chair and a dresser. So really basic. And using the set designer stuff, it's really easy to have windows and wall, uh, windows, walls, doors, and these are parametric as well. Just so I could show you real quick, if you wanted to um, grab the door wall and then you grab the door in it, you can actually start to change the the size of this to be bigger or more more closer to what uh, to what you're using in real life. If you're using this for previs, for instance. And what did I want to do here? Oh yeah, so I wanted to show you how to change the colors of the walls really quickly. I try to do this in every demo. I am going to make a new PBR material. I'm going to call it um, walls. <laughs> Pretty good. And if you're not using uh, R19, you don't have a new PBR, just use new material and then just put a, in the bottom, put a Lambertian layer. So you'll add, and you'd add Lambertian, and then you would add a Beckman on top of it. And then you have this setup basically, but this does save a tiny bit of time here. I'm going to make this color something like we did in the demo. Something like that. I think that's going to be okay. I'm going to go to reflection and bring that way down and go to like 60, something like this. So now if I grab all of the walls, all three walls, I can go to wall material and I can overwrite the, the default material. And there we have it. There we have a little bit of a change there in wall color. So what we're going to do to finish this up is I'm going to create an angle. So this is always a little bit awkward without Cine Designer, I find. I'm going to go like this, kind of scoot myself into this corner here, and I'm going to make a default Cinema 4D camera. So going like that. I'm going to call this camera A. That's how I like to think about these. And I'm going to change its focal length to 18 to be a little bit wider. Clipping into the wall, it'll be something like this. It's kind of like the render I made before. And now it's time to turn on the wall and turn on the ceiling. So there, this is what our final render will look like. Um, pretty boring. I had a frame before. You could keep dressing it. You can download other dressing and then in time I'll have more props and stuff like that to add to this as well. But right now we're really dealing with like the the core guts of sets and locations with Set Designer. So let's just light this really quickly. I'm going to do it all basically from the top view here. Uh, we're going to use a new PBR light, which is basically an area light. And if you're using Cine Designer, just use a frame or something like that. Do something very similar. We're going to be just kind of putting like tracing paper essentially on the windows and blowing them out. We're not really going to be concerned with what's outside of the windows. So what's up with this? Oh, so at this point with the lights on, we want to turn our reflections back on, which is reflections. Yeah, so now the lights will actually kind of show up. I'm still dealing with, I'm still kind of learning about the new PBR workflow in Cinema 4D and physical. It's not, doesn't seem like perfectly integrated yet. I mean, it's integrated, but it's not as seamless as I would hope. And for people that are interested, I am going to start building a Cine Designer and um, Set Designer as well for, one second, for, um, for Redshift, which is gonna be a hell of a lot faster for rendering. So I think based on my last renders, I should know that these are gonna be pretty decent sized, um, or decent photometrics for this, but I'm gonna make them like 900 candelas. And I'm gonna save this. And this whole scene will be available to download for these set designer users who maybe, maybe don't wanna start from scratch, just wanna start with this. I'm just gonna call set for, this is our demo scene. And yeah, this should be basically ready to render now. So we have this saved and I'm gonna show you a quick, not like trick, but a workflow for dealing with um, previews here. So we're gonna go to we're gonna go to preview, and then I'm gonna change it from preview to progressive, which doesn't do a ton. But uh, and zero, and I will turn on ambient occlusion in ten. So now if I hit Shift R, uh, this should pop up a little preview pretty quickly. So I'm in 1280 by 720, which is a large frame. I'm gonna be making this smaller for the the final render. But in progressive mode here, without any GI, I get a pretty quick, very blurry uh, preview of what this scene looks like. And I can look at this and I'm like, it's too green. Like the, the bed looks gross. 
Um, but the lighting levels, they look pretty normal, and there doesn't seem to be anything too weird happening here. I think I'm going to stop this. And so this is what I would recommend doing, is making a little render setting for this, which I got to make a video on render settings, but go to physical, no GI, turn it to progressive, put the samples all the way down, and then just use this for your quick preview rendering, because otherwise it takes a long time. And the last thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to use the ceiling material, and I'm going to actually show you, you can change the material of the table and the chairs now, which is kind of new. I'm just going to put the, this material on this as well, like that. So it's that quick to change the materials, which is great in the case that you want to make a redshift material and just drag it on there. You can use this workflow. Nothing really has to change other than you dragging some stuff, and you're only dealing with the high-level objects. You don't have to actually open them up and find the geometry and stuff. You can just change the materials really quick like this. I think that that's really helpful for me, and hopefully that's helpful for everyone else. So let me just do another quick re review here. I didn't like the color of the... I don't like the color of the, of the blanket now that I'm leaving it like this. I might just make it kind of gray and boring. But I wanted to show you this quick kind of like, this is called look dev, this phase here where you're changing the colors, you're changing the lighting, and you're just dealing with really blurry previews. And when you get to redshift and octane, you skip this phase because it's just really fast, usually. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my bed. I'm going to put all of this stuff in furniture. And where's the bed here? Uh, I don't like this at all. I'm just going to make it kind of like a dark gray like that. And let's set up for a final render here. So I'm not going to do like a full, full final render, like a 1080p frame or something like that. That would take a long time. 960 by 40, that's a reasonable size. Um, you can upscale that for Instagram and whatnot. Usually works out fine. And we're going to go back to physical. So we're going to go back to adaptive and we'll say low. And with these physical shaders, you need to have a lot of samples and gloss and blurriness. It just takes a lot of samples. So 644 is pretty good. This will take a little while now. We're going to put on global illumination so the light bounces around. I'm going to use light mapping for my secondary method. This can be low, and then this can be 15,000. It's fine. It won't take all that long. And I'm going to save again, and I'm going to hit render. And this is pretty much the final scene, minus the lights. I'll probably take the lights out. This will be the final scene that will be included with the frame here. That will be included with um, set designer. This will be set four, I think. Yeah, it's set four, and this is our bedroom. So I'm going to hit render, and I'll come back when it's all done. Okay, and we are back. And something I've noticed about the new Cinema 4D PBR materials is that they're really noisy, and they take a little bit longer to render. But I'm still new to this workflow. I'm just starting to get used to it and trying it out. But this does make me want to move to Redshift or Octane really badly. But here is the final render that I went with. It's a 540 tall image. Um, we turned some of the samples down. So it took about 20 minutes to get here. Uh, this was like really low samples. This was three minutes, which is not terrible. And then uh, these were some of our tests before. And then this is a 720p render, and this took about 30 minutes. So, you know, physical render is not the fastest in the world, but you do get pretty decent looking photorealistic results. And this was, again, more of a demo for set designer than anything else. So that wraps it up for this video. Uh, if you have any questions about this process or set designer or anything, leave them in the comments below or head over to the forum at cinematographydb.com. Until next time, I'll see you guys later.